Hello, hello. Welcome to the Cynthia Mannion Show. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so good, and I hope you are too. If not, get there. You can do it. Yes, you can. Tonight, we have founder and CEO Allison Turner on. And I was blessed to meet her um, two years ago at a mastermind in Orlando, Florida, that was put on by Ken Walls and Craig Doswit and their wives, Jill Walls and Nat Natalie. And we had they, they had great guests. And among the people that were there, let me see who was there. And Glenn Moore Shower and uh, James. Oh, you know what? We'll do this with with Miss Allison Turner. Anyway, she is the owner and CEO of Fat Cat Media. Um, it was formerly a different company, um, BCO SF, and she bought out that company. She bought out the owner and became the the whole owner, right? Because she's a woman on a mission helping other women and all businesses, whatever you need ish. You know, she's got her niche and she can take care of you, but she loves to help people. She is healthy and well-trained. She is a consultant for South Florida and Turnkey Music Studio. She does a lot with the Chamber of Commerce and in the government of Delray, Florida and all that area. She's in the know. She knows who's who and is really helping people in the Delray, Florida. It's a beautiful area. She has more than 25 years, probably more than that now, right? Of management, customer service, marketing, communications. She's one of those people who's like driven. Like when she was in college, she um, went on a division one uh, tennis college athlete. Don't you love athletes? We love athletes. They're disciplined. They ca call them, carry through on their word. You can count on them. Um, this was at Northwest University. And she has a Bachelor of Arts. And she is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing coaching. She has a new partner. Well, I guess <laughs> technically Jack works for her and he has the whole music side, video side, production side, and he's doing lots and lots of things. And she is on the historic preservation board for the city of Delray Beach. And you know what? Without further ado, let's bring on Allison Turner. Woohoo! Hey, thanks and for having me. Yes, it's wonderful to have you. She is at Kate, and there's Jack joining us. Hi, Jack. Yep. Nice to hey, have Jack. you here. <laughs> so I started to talk about um, the mastermind that we met at, and who else was there? The guy that sang on Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, James Barber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we had other great people there. Yeah, that Dr. John Gray was there. John Gray. Um, um, Nick, Nick, the NFL football player. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can picture him. I can't think of his last name right this second. But. Yeah, you can see him on Facebook everywhere. He does so much for the world. Right. And meanwhile, we're still living off that mastermind and meeting up and helping each other. And because, you know, you go to these masterminds, you become um, acquainted with new people and then you don't let them go. You have to reach out to them and keep working on it. So now we have Allison on and she's going to tell us a little bit about how she got started and what she's doing. And, and I have <laughs> lots of questions for her, but we'll just let her go for a moment. Okay, how I got started and what I'm doing. Um, that's a loaded question. So I started this company actually with a business partner. So you referenced BCOSF. Um, so originally we were called Business Consultants of South Florida. So we started the company together. My corporation name is BCOSF Inc. So that's which is ah. the, the letters of Business Consultants of South Florida. We couldn't actually get the corporation name Business Consultants of South Florida. Someone else had it. So that's how we uh so that was a dba under the corporation so i started as a consultant and we were literally headquartered in delray beach florida and we would start looking at small businesses and delray beach is a very entrepreneurial town we it's probably about seventy thousand people now i think at the time it was maybe sixty five thousand people and most businesses are four employees or less we were building out marketing strategies different things like that so when we would look at people's brand or their website or whatever, you kind of look at it and you'd be like, uh, yeah, you may not want to use that. You know, it was something they had either built themselves. It was something they had designed themselves or they had had a designer do it, but they like certain colors, but the colors maybe weren't great for the brand, different things like that. And we started doing some of the branding stuff and the website design and, um, you know, graphic design and whatnot. We started doing that under the consulting 
umbrella. Mm-hmm. And then my, we realized very quickly that we weren't great in business together. This was my, we started the company together. We weren't great in business together. We had very different visions of where the company was going. And uh, we pretty much butted heads. We were 50, 50 partners. And this is literally, <laughs> this is what happened. She left the company. I bought that side out at the time. This would have been in 2014. And I continued to build out some of the marketing stuff because I really enjoyed it under the consulting umbrella. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I took it to two divisions. And the second division was, I think Jack's probably shared that with you, BCOSF Media. And the only reason I really put it that way is because I had branded business consultants of South Florida so well. And if you looked at the logo of that brand, it had like BCOSF in it, but then it had like business consultants of South Florida. So I was trying to like make the brand more uniform. I would probably in hindsight do it a little bit differently, but that's what I did at the time. So then I all of a sudden had these two divisions and then Jack came on board maybe seven years ago, maybe eight. I don't know when we started working together. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the video producer, the video side. And then we created a third division, which was the Turnkey Music Studio. And all of a sudden I had three divisions, three websites, three sets of social media accounts, three everything, three everything. And I was like a little overwhelmed because all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to manage, you know, it's one thing to manage like one set of social media accounts for your company and one website and whatnot. Um, it's a whole different ballgame managing three. Mm-hmm. And we decided to rebrand in 2021. So the brand you see now, which is the Bat Cat Media Group, that's the brand we went to. And um, you referenced Craig Deswalt as being one of the people that was uh, did the the event in Orlando. And, you know, we talked to him a little bit about the brand and just, I mean, I had some ideas Jack had some ideas. I was working with a uh, attorney, a copyright attorney, because I wanted that name copyrighted. And Smart. so, and then I also wanted the dot com. So, you know, when you look at that from a branding perspective, you're looking at, okay, what can I actually copyright? But then also, can I actually get the dot com? Because there's all these new domains out there dot media, dot this, dot that, you know, but I, I've yet to see how they, and I'm in marketing, I don't really see how they're going to impact yet in the like search engine optimization world. And there's too many people that just assume you have a dot com. I mean, unless you're like a nonprofit and it's a dot org, but mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the big three or four sites are like dot com dot co dot I see us every, every once in a while and dot org. Like those are kind of the ones that I, you see all the time. And so we figured out, we started playing, or I started playing with the name cat because we're animal people. So we have dogs and cats at the house. And so dog's not really a great name to rhyme with because, you know, it's hog. <laughs> you know, it's not really like, but, you know, you always see, you know, the interesting thing was you always see on, if you watch Netflix and you watch the Netflix movies, these production companies are like Fat Cat Media or Fat yeah. Cat Productions or and I started looking at those. And so then I started playing around with the name a little bit. And I was like, Bat Cat. And, you know, Jack's a big, uh, I, can, I can never remember if it's Marvel or the other one, but he's a big <laughs> superhero person. <laughs> so I wasn't say that for lack of a better word. And I talked to the attorney. I'm like, what do you think about that? Because we looked at a bunch of other things and there were just either conflicts on the copyright side or you couldn't get the dot com or anything near the dot com. And she's like, I think that would work, you know, and, you know, so we went forward with that and poof, that's how Bat Cat Media Group came. So we have a a copyright on Bat Cat Media. Um, And so that's, that's kind of how things kind of came together in the world of uh, Bat Cat Media Group. And now, and we, we, really, I tried to hone down the services a little bit because we had all these different services across three different divisions. And so I took the consulting more to coaching because I really love, I love working with startup companies and people new in business. Like that's where I really feel I can make the biggest impact. 
and it's great because I can really work with them from a couple of different ways. I can work with them from the business side and the ideas and how you get going, but then I can also work with them from the marketing side and how do we create that brand? How do we create the, you know, the online presence and whatnot as well. So I really like, love that. So I took it more from, instead of consulting, went to the coaching side, really focused there. And that's where like my podcast, Dream Plan Start Grow came out of that uh, because that was, that's, you know, everything starts with a dream or a vision, you know, however you want to say it. And then you kind of go from there. So that's, that's the, I guess, long answer to your, your question. Oh, no, I love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> it brought up like three or four ne next questions, but then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cause you said it so fast. You're, you're, I was looking at your website today. Um, she has a very nice website. You should ch check it out. However, you said it's so fast, your podcast. Where is it? Yeah, Dream Plan Start Grow. So I have yes. it, it has its own website. So you can also see it on it has dreamplanstartgrow.com. So it has its own it has its own website too. So <laughs> so while I was trying to condense everything to like one thing and I we succeeded for a while, then all of a sudden I created a website for the podcast. And then I created my own personal brand website. So now I got three websites again. So, but not three sets of social media. <laughs> Here it is dreamplanstartgrow.com. And she has amazing guests on. I've only seen women. Do you have men on there too sometimes? Or do you cater to yeah. women? Yeah, no, I've had, she I've said had men, men on there too. I mean, actually Craig Duswalt was on there. Ken Walls was on there. Um, James Barber was on there. All the, the three people we just talked about <laughs> all were on there. Perfect. So yes. I didn't catch yes. those. I did catch some really amazing ones. And I thought, ah, she's got over 70 podcasts. So if you haven't caught up with Allison Turner, you can hit dreamplanstartgrow.com and go see them. And you've got uh, Darlene Eaton saying hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Um, so your podcast, which has over 70, when did you start that? Just recently? Or, uh, 70 seems like a I lot. So. Yeah, I started that in, let me think, 22, 22, yeah, 2022, I think that's right. Yeah, I think 2022. You know, the funny thing is I I really started, I had like six episodes that weren't video, they were just uh, audio. So I really started when the pandemic hit, I knew there was an opportunity because I knew people were going to lose jobs, people were going to be out of work and people would start businesses. So I had started way back in, yeah, it must've been 20, uh, maybe end of 20. And I was like, no way in heck I'm doing video. I'm just doing audio. So I started and they, I mirrored it off of someone I listened to. He did, he does, I don't know if he's still out there, but he's a business coach up in Ohio and he would do a episode every day. And I was like, not going to quite do that. <laughs> wow. Maybe had too much. I mean, he'll do it from his car. He'll like, one of his, like, he's like, I'm sitting in my car in front of, you know, whatever story he was in front of. Oh. <laughs> and he would relate anything that his experience to something in business. And it would just be like a short, might be eight to 12 minutes. Like, and that was it. Like, and I really liked that because, you know, it was quick. You could listen to one, you could listen to multiple ones, depending on how much time. So originally I started it. Yeah, I think in 20, either 20 or early 21, doing that. And I was like, but I was so nervous about doing it, doing it. And it wasn't even on video. It was only audio because I'd go into my office. I'd, you know, map out this whole script out and and uh, go through it. And then I would add the, I did everything myself. So I'd add the intro and the outro. I created an intro and an outro for it. So I would do everything on GarageBand on my, my Mac and uh and then launch it. So I did, I think six episodes and then I got, you know, and it was a little slower time because of the pandemic and whatnot, because marketing is one of the first things that companies like to cut. Right. Uh, so, and then all of a sudden I got busy. So I stopped doing it. And then I- you. That's a good news problem. Yeah, so then I stopped doing it and then I ended up joining Toastmasters later, I think that year and uh have been in there maybe almost it'll be two years in september i want to say now you just joined it in the last two years yeah yeah so all of a sudden then when i brought it back out again with the whole interview process i was like oh i'm gonna do video this time and <laughs> so i morphed it into the video side 
rebranded the podcast slightly. Uh, I had a little bit different look before. It was still Dream, Plan, Start, Grow, but it, I rebranded it slightly and came out with it a whole different way. And now I do some, because I like to live stream just myself talking. So I still do some shorter episodes that you will see on the audio side, like some of my live streams I've taken into the audio. You know, they might be 10 minute, 12 minute, 15 minutes on either something in business coaching side or something in the marketing side. So I have like incorporated a little bit of what I was doing before. I just pull the audio from the live stream and, and move it over there. So. Terrific. And you have obviously great passion for this. Is this what makes you the happiest in this current bat cat media plant grow live? World? <laughs> what makes me the happiest? I think seeing client, my clients successful. That's, that's what makes me the happiest. And she's got a very good background to help ladies and men be successful and companies because she's very disciplined. She's got a one, two, three, four attitude and she will go down and look into you, see what your end goal is and get you there. And how did you develop all of these skills? Because tennis is a good way to start and give us a little more about your background from beginning, beginning days where you got all these skills. <laughs> I would say, yeah, the athletics definitely played a big part because I was so involved, like growing up, I was playing the national tournament scene in the United States. I was playing tennis probably seven days a week, most of the time and, you know, going to school. And I would also do like backstage theater stuff at my high school. So when I ended up in high school, I, I wanted to do backstage theater stuff. So I would literally go from, you know, school to tennis for two or three hours back to school that night, you know, not all the time, but a good portion of the year. And that was how I lived life. And so I had to be super organized. I had to be super on point in order to get everything done. I was in a pretty tough school. So it wasn't, you know, like a walk in the park where I could just, you know, definitely, definitely never saw myself as like the smartest kid in the class by any means. So I had to work to, so there were nights I would stay up till one or two in the morning just to get like everything done or a test study for or whatever it was, and then turn around and get up at six in the morning and do it all over again the next night. But I would say that was, that's a definitely a big part of, you know, my drive and my kind of behind the scenes of how I get things done. Cause I've learned, you know, early on that I had to be super organized and on point to basically be a hundred percent on all those things. And it takes it, it takes that kind of discipline to get you there. Yeah, definitely. What are some of the key experiences in your life that shaped your career as a business coach and a dream business architect? Key experiences. I mean, a couple, I would say one is I didn't have that when I started a business. And so all those things, I mean, luckily the one good thing is the person I started the business with, she had owned a business before. So she did have some background in business. Like I didn't have the background in business. I had a MBA, but you think in the MBA world that I didn't, you know, we never talked about, I mean, all the professors I had, they weren't teaching about that because I wasn't on the entrepreneurship track. I was just in the MBA track. And um, so that wasn't really super helpful <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you know, how many ever thousands of dollars later, but, uh, you know, but I think if I had it all over, you know, to do all over again, it would have been helpful for me to have that person because when you're, you know, if it's your business partner, that's the person mm -hmm. and she's already, you know, as I said, she and I butted heads just because we were, she was uh, very much that visionary person, which is great, but she would just start going on something and then all of a sudden change tracks on me. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, um, I learned a lot from her, but, you know, that was, that's the, the reality. And so I think, you know, if I had it to do over again, that would have been a, a helpful piece of maybe the lack of having that business coach early on. I mean, I've worked with business coaches since then, but it's been, you know, more recently in my journey versus at the beginning of the journey. So I think that's one of the big pieces for me of what drives 
uh, the you know dream plan start grow and the business coaching side of our company. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is, you know, when we started from the marketing side, when we started doing the branding and the websites and things under the consulting umbrella back in year one and early year two, um, I found out I really liked it and I was the one doing the website. So I was all self-taught. Like I basically, you know, watched videos. I looked up stuff. I tried to figure out what to do and, and what I needed to do. And, and, uh, was self-taught and a lot. We found a great graphic designer. I still use that same graphic designer today. Um, and so everything else kind of just fell into place. So I figured out that I really liked that more so than maybe doing, uh, you know, a, a, some of the consulting stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that, you know, I like some of the consulting stuff, but I really decided, you know, and I really like the coaching from like day one or like, you know, early on in the business journey where they're kind of stagnant. You're like, okay, where do I go from here? Because there's so much that goes into that. I mean, there's, it's not just business. You know, right. when you started, I mean, there's the psychology of starting a business. You, all of a sudden you're doing everything. And, you know, before you worked for whatever company and here was your job description and that was it. And now all of a sudden, you know, the job description is like the whole thing. <laughs> like, you got to do it all. That's the job description. <laughs> so, you know, things wow. like that. Um, I think those are kind of some of the points that really inspire me to help others and help other businesses. It's terrific. I'm going to take a moment and say hi to Freddie in Mexico. Thanks for uh, signing yeah. in. We appreciate yeah, you. Chihuahua, Mexico. Say hello. And there's a little lesson here that, oh, there's look at that. Um, I mean, he's from Chihuahua, Mexico. So we got to bring on the Chihuahua. See, we <laughs> that for you, Freddie. How perfect. Thank yep. you, Allison. <laughs> um, and that brings up like, so you, your designer, graphic designer that you've had, you got along very well. So that relationship, did you search that out more? Because your partner and you, I'm just going into like communication and checking out who you're uh, getting into bed with, so to speak, so that you always can you know, you really got to research these things. You did the research on your label. You did the research on um, Bat Cat. You did the research yeah. on your, did you do that research with your first partner or you just kind of fell into that with partnership? I'm just looking, I'm just like. Well, the partnership, you know, we fell, we fell into the partnership. I mean, definitely. As far as like my business partner, yes. that's what your question, yeah. We fell into that partnership. Um, probably, yeah, research wasn't in there. There are a lot of things that were probably warning signs from both from both of our sides. I mean, and I won't you know put any blame anywhere, but um, you know the graphic designer came through a client of ours who used her, and that's how we originally met her. Um, she's up in Central Florida, so that's how we originally met her. Was that way was through this client, and I have yet to find anyone that's as good as she is. Hmm. Uh, I've tried other ones just not to replace her by any means, but sometimes she gets like super busy. And so I've tried to find someone that could just like fill in, you know, for, for certain projects or something like that. And I have yet to find one that, uh, is comparable. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, actually. which is, says a lot about her, but I that just have yet, you know, I've yet to find anyone that's really comparable to her abilities in, in that world. And also relationship capital. So you met her through your client and then yeah. that lasted. So a referral that got you to, and yeah. your, your former business partner, was that a referral? You just happened to be working there. It just happened to happen. We, <laughs> yeah, it happened to happen. I okay. mean, we, yeah. We'll, it, move on. It, we'll move on. So what motivated you to um, your transition from the director of the junior tennis <laughs> program into starting your own business and what you currently do? Because I bet you got a lot of lessons there. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, every job I've had from like, you know, growing up through until I have this company, I would always get bored at some point. And yeah. You've got one of those minds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would, I would get to the point of, you know, where this, wherever the ceiling was or wherever I perceived the ceiling and maybe that's a better way to say it. And I was like, okay, now I'm getting bored and what's, is there a way to move forward within this company or this 
what I'm doing or is there not a way and do I need to figure out the next step? And so with the tennis thing, I stayed in tennis a whole lot longer than I ever thought I would. I mean, I was actually teaching tennis for about 14 years. So I taught three years in Chicago. I actually ran the adult program in Chicago and I taught three years there. And then I moved to Florida and I ended up in a country club in Florida. So I never thought I would stay in a country club for 11 years ever. Like it never even occurred to me because I was like, oh, you know, all right, that's a job. I'll move down there. I'll figure out the lay of the land. And, you know, I can always whatever. And I ended up staying there for 11 years. Now, within that, I did go back and get my MBA. So I went part time at one point. They allowed mm-hmm. me to go part time and because um, I was doing the MBA full time. So so it worked out from that standpoint of things really well. But I became like the director of junior tennis, as you mentioned. And I never wanted to be the director of tennis, right? Because the next step would have been director of tennis, not necessarily there, but at, you know, another club like that. And mm-hmm. the director of tennis answers to the general manager of our country club. They answer to, you know, and obviously the general manager answers to the board of directors. So all the problems go into that office. And I was like, do I really ever want to do that? At the time, I was like, I don't know if I really ever want to do that. So I was like, I really want to do something different. And that's what kind of got me looking. That's why I went back to get my MBA at the time, because I was like, okay, now I have a resume that's got tennis, 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 tennis on it. And, and where is it going? Uh And that's really why I went back to, I thought I wanted to stay in the sports world. So my MBA actually has a concentration in athletics or in sports uh, management, but it's not a a master's in sports management. It's an actual MBA in Florida Atlantic University, where I got that uh, down here in South Florida was one of the first programs that actually, instead of having the concentration in, it's like five classes in entrepreneurship or marketing or something like that, they did the concentration in or offered it sports management. So that's what I did thinking I wanted to stay in sports. And I interned throughout that 18 month program. So I interned at several different places. I interned for the Florida Panthers, which is the NHL ice hockey team down here. Uh, I interned for Lynn university, which is a division two school in Boca Raton. And I interned for the Delray beach ATP tournament um, that's here in Delray. And I really loved the tennis thing, but they were a very small, close knit group, very family owned, you know, and they told me like, we're not gonna be able to pay you what you're, you know, you're worth. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Florida Panthers was a little too corporate for me, which I wasn't expecting. I mean, I should have expected it, but I really wanted to work for the the, uh, Dolphins. That was my big plan at the time. And I'm like, okay, they're going to be equally corporate. (laughs) So they're not, it's not going to be any different down there. Uh, And it's going to be a longer drive than the Panthers. And then Linda University, I loved, and Mm -hmm. it's division two. So it wasn't quite like division one, which is where I played college tennis is much, you know, there's a much bigger athletic department because there's more compliance stuff you have to deal with. And there's a lot more you have to deal with. And in division two, there's still money in it for athletes, but it's not as like, I don't want to say cutthroat. That's probably not the right word. But anyway, I really love that. But then I would see people going into division two athletics and the only way really to move up because the athletic department is much smaller. So, you know, whereas like a division one might have and I'm probably exaggerating, but let's just say 100 people in their athletic department. If it's a big school, probably more than that. But, you know, a Division II might have 15. Ooh. So, the, so the only way to move up is really to move school to school, like not within the school. And I was like, you know, my luck, I'll like have to go to like North Dakota or somewhere that's like really cold. Nothing, no offense to anyone from North Dakota. I'm sure it's beautiful there in the summer, but maybe not for me in the winter. So... I was like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. You know, I was in my 30s at the time and or no, maybe I was, yeah, I was late 30s at the time when I did my MBA. And I just didn't see myself doing that. And so I actually went back in ten I stayed in tennis for a little bit longer. And then I decided to start a different company. So originally I started my own company. I because I'd started networking with this women's group. And they were all into, you know, like anyone can start a company, anyone can do this. And so I always liked, I love doing nature photography and I don't like people photography so much, but nature photography. And then, so I started doing some of that 
And I started a company around that it was more of a spiritual company. And um, I did that for a little bit, you know, realized that, okay, we got to figure out where that niche is, <laughs> where that niche is going. Mm -hmm. And then that's, so when I was networking in that group, that's when I met my business who became this business partner. Um, that's when I met her when I was networking in this women's group. And then Jack, she ended up hiring Jack to be her video person to film her. She was a great speaker and whatnot. So she ended up hiring Jack to film something of hers, which is how I met Jack was through this, again, the same women's organization. And that's kind of how the, the triangle worked there. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so, and then everything kind of played out from, from there. Excellent. So see, ladies and gentlemen, get out in the world. Get out of the so world. I don't know if I actually answered your question. I don't even remember what your question was, but, but hopefully well, I answered it. Well, we're going to say hi to Nancy from the Philippines. It's nicer. Oh, hi, down there. Nancy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I appreciate you joining, Nancy. It's always a pleasure. We're having a great time here with Allison Turner. She is amazing. And we were just talking about, um, we lightly touched on finances. So you kind of didn't go into the nature piece after that, right? Because of... Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there's a ton of photography companies because I wasn't really doing it as just photography. I was trying to, I was creating like a, almost like a coaching program with it, but doing like meditations with photos and different things. And um, I saw the... I don't know. At that time in my life, I saw kind of the uphill battle of where that was going to go um, because, you know, it's, you're early. You were early. It didn't quite catch on yet. Yeah, exactly. It, and so, now, yes, I know yeah, you can so, make anything work, but at the time. Yeah. At the time I was like, yeah, maybe not. And then, as I said, I just kind of things fell into place with this business partner at the time. And um, that's where we went. <laughs> And then you and Jack kind of joined in to become a dynamic duel. Of course, you are his boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hates when you remind him of that. But <laughs> um, so how do you balance the creativity with the financial aspects of running a business? How do you guys do that? Are you in charge of all that? You do it together? I'm, yeah, the financial side is pretty much me. <laughs> so, um, so, so, hi, yeah. Alex, real quick. Hi, Alex. Thanks for joining. Hi, Alex. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the financial side is pretty much me um, and the administrative side of the business is pretty much me. So like all the, you know, I'm the one that handles like all the payments of all the software stuff that we have, all the all, all the different stuff <laughs> that we have that, you know, you need subscriptions to pay for um, every month, every year, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, all that falls into my my corner. So what are some of the common financial pitfalls that new business owners should be aware of? Where do I go with that? That's a loaded question too. Well, um, any way you want. Buying for <laughs> asset. Funny, honey. Um, <laughs> uh, He's adorable. Yes. Some of the common, you know, I would say a new company, I mean, there's so many different things. I, I would say just don't, try and you know go for what you want to do but don't over spend initially i mean i think the big thing is you know i mean the, the benefit today especially coming out of the pandemic was you know there's more and more people working from a home office so you don't necessarily depending on what company it is obviously some companies have to have an office space or a storage space or whatever it is but there's so many kind of service companies that can actually run from a home office initially and not have to have the expenditure of an office or have to have like a, a bigger overhead, you know, and I think there's so many ways around some of what maybe wasn't possible 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, where the, the norm was like, go get an office. And now between the pandemic and then the, the millennials and the, I guess, Gen Z, population who are more like co-working space and, you know, work from home, all that type of thing. There's a lot more options out there, I think, today than there were. So I think some of the pitfall, pitfalls in, you know, starting a company is like, you just have to be on point of what the goal is. And 
not get scattered because that's the biggest thing because right? usually you, you when i talk to new companies they're like oh i want to do this 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 and this you know like it's like i'm like okay well which one of these is the first point <laughs> you know i get that i see the big vision i see where you're going with it but you're only going to get you know you need to like because if you put energy into all five all at once then you're probably not going to do any of them really well <clears throat> so I don't even know if that's a financial pitfall. It's more of a, hey, let's focus in on like the first goal, meet that goal, and then go to the next goal, as opposed to having five that you're doing all at once. It's okay to have five, but just don't focus on all of them at once and then really do one well, achieve that, go to the next step, achieve that, go to the next step, achieve that. Um, Howard wants to say hi to you. He's liking your story. Hey, Howard. Good. Thanks for hopping on here tonight. Um, so there you are um, with all of these, keeping your little chickens in row on their <laughs> mission. Um, how do you do that? How do you manage it so that they, are these the entrepreneurs brand new or do they come from, or probably both, they came from a corporate place where they're working nine to five or whatever. And now they have to figure out how to run their business, run their finances and do all the stuff they want to do and how do you help them? Yeah. And, the, and you're just talking about the coaching side of my business. So like my marketing side, like I have, yeah, let's go to marketing. Cause marketing side, I have clients that are, you know, been in business for years. So, I mean, I, like I, that's interesting because I have like a array of clients where I really focus on the coaching side of like the beginner, the, the newer in business clients, mm -hmm. the marketing side, a lot of my, I would say we have clients anywhere from someone that's a solopreneur startup type company all the way to, I mean, I have clients that are in California um, who have been in business for maybe 10 years, eight years, 10 years. And then I have another a law firm that's been in business for a long time. And so I have clients all over the board on the marketing side. So I would say, you know, that's the interesting, I think that's what keeps the job interesting. You know, I told mm -hmm. you earlier that I get bored, I got bored and kind of not even nine to five jobs. Cause I don't even think I ever had a nine to five job. Well, I did once. Um, like for like, that was, eight for about, five, right? that was that the social service thing? No. And that wasn't nine to five by any means. Um, no, yeah. that was when I worked in, uh, I worked for a, in a financial planning company. So we worked. Oh, financial in there. Ah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I did the, um, Back in the day, and you, you you can probably remember this day, but I don't know if you they had wire operators. I don't know if you remember that, but because uh, you probably never worked in that field, but they had wire operators. They were the ones that actually put the orders in. So, like, if a stock broker person like came and they would hand you the order and say like buy a hundred shares of Apple, let's just say, mm -hmm. like I was the one that put the order into the computer system, you know, wow. at, and then later, not that much later, but later, you know, they got they would network all these, you know, so the brokers got to put their own stuff in. So, so, you know, that eliminated that job, but back in, I mean, this is in my early twenties. So I was getting a good foundation for your business already. 23, 24, probably when I was in that. And my father was a financial planner in Indianapolis and this, I was in Chicago at the time. So I literally was like, I got out of social services cause I just saw, I, I got frustrated in the industry and, um, I was looking at other job opportunities. And so he had reached out to somebody that ran a office in my area um, from the same company. And he was, you know, was looking for a wire operator. So I was like, Oh, I'll try it. So, I mean, I was only there, I think it was there 14 months, you know, and again, I hit the wall of like, I, I never wanted to be a financial planner. Like I had zero desire to manage other people's money, like no desire whatsoever. <laughs> because I thought about taking the series seven test, um, which is what you have to do to do that. And I was like, so I actually studied some of it. So I actually learned a lot, but then I was like, I don't want to do that. And then I went a different direction. I mean, I, I thought about being a trader in that industry, but to do it within the company I was in, I either had to, moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which was a no for me at the time, or I had to, there was a place I could have traded out West in West of Chicago, but it would have probably taken me like an hour plus to get to every day. So I was like, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. So where were you born? 
Miami. Miami. Okay, so you were like in Florida, then you went to Chicago, and then you well, came I was back. in Florida. I grew up for the most part in Indianapolis, Indiana. So my father was transferred when I was six from Orlando area up to Indianapolis. So I grew up in Indianapolis, was there until I was 18. I went to Northwestern up in Chicago or outside of Chicago, which is in the Big Ten. And um, then I stayed in Chicago until I was 30 because I really love the city of Chicago. If, if the weather it's, was, cold. it's cold there. Well, I didn't love that part of it. So like January to April, I could have done without. So I'm still trying to figure out like what if I can, you know, eventually – I love to live in Chicago like four months of the year. And those would be like pretty much uh, July, August, September, October. <laughs> like the, the months we're leading into here in hurricane season. Um, where you could pull that off, actually. Yeah, because I could work from anywhere. So it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, we have office space in a studio here. So Jack is a little, you know, he could work from anywhere, but it's a little different for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I can really work from for any from anywhere. But um, so eventually, that's going to be the plan. But because I love Chicago in the summer, so yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, not can so much in the winter. <laughs> best story of one of your clients who turned their business dreams into a reality with your guidance. Now you can take that either from, from why don't you take it from one of your clients, the coaching clients, and then do it for one of your marketing clients. Maybe one that you did a a campaign for in marketing and took them from. A to D? Well, let me, I'm going to do a combined one. So okay. I have a client that, and they really didn't hire me for coaching, but I found that I was coaching. So even though they weren't necessarily paying for coaching, <laughs> paying for coaching, I was coaching because they were uh, back in the day when they first, you know, brought me on, um, they were, a couple of a couple of brothers and they were running this business together and so and kind of like me and my business partner didn't always see eye to eye on everything and so i found that i was coaching some in that relationship so even though we were managing all of their website stuff we were managing their newsletters we were managing some of their email accounts we were managing all of that I was talking to you know the brothers and being like, okay, like here's the next step. Like, are we really going to do this? Or are we going to do this? Like, are, you know, because just trying to, they were they weren't super new in business at the time. They they had been in business like when I came on, and this is probably seven years ago, I want to say, when I came on, they were they had been in business a couple of years or maybe a little bit more, but you know, it was like they were getting ready to really explode more. Mm -hmm. you know, but it was trying to figure out, do they do it together or do they separate out, mm. you know, and, and kind of do their own thing? Meaning, because there were a couple of different companies that were involved. There wasn't just one. So there were opportunities to do things a little bit differently and, and separate out a little bit. And, you know, one person handled this and one person handled that, which is ended up what, what did happen. So while I wasn't necessarily paid to coach... <laughs> You know, I felt because of my relationship with them. And at that point, you know, I think I'd been with them for a couple of years or, you know, so I had the relationship and I interacted with them pretty much daily in some way. It may it might be an email, it might be a text, whatever. I mean, but there was a lot of interaction going on there. Mm -hmm. So, and today, I mean, they're, they've both grown you know, kind of separately, but they've both grown and, you know, continue to build new, new pieces of their business in. So, you know, they, they've continued to kind of add on, add on to their business and continue to grow it. So I would say that's a great example of, you know, kind of how things melded together um, with them because of where they came from and then kind of where they, they've gone today. So Batcat does you do their like their websites, their communications, their podcasts, their blogs. You manage all that for both of them, or all of them, I should say. Yeah, I mean we manage that for yeah for pretty much all of them. We don't we don't do as much blogging. We do some of the social media for them on mm -hmm. some of the accounts. It just depends on which brother it is. <laughs> it's different. Our contracts a little bit different based on the brothers now. Mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah. So how do you plan to continue evolving as a business coach and an entrepreneur, Miss Allison Turner? <laughs> That's a great question because I'm, I've been looking at, cause I have a whiteboard over here to my, my left. Um, so I've been looking at some of that recently and actually, um, that's on my list to do this week is to kind of look at where things are and what my, you know, kind of next steps are, my next goals are moving forward. Um, at the end of last year, I did bring out a course and called the dream business plan course. And it was really, the goal was for someone that wanted to start a business and really like almost brand new in business. I mean, like that was kind of the market for it. Um, so online, completely virtual, everything like that. And then I have another one that I'm still working on building out. And it's a little bit more kind of marketing as a solopreneur. Because a lot of times what I've found with solopreneurs is they can't necessarily afford to hire a marketing company like ours. You know, they don't have, you know, they're, especially if they're starting the company at that point, or even if they're new or in business, like even they're in, in the first year or two. Um, and I've seen that with some of the clients like Jack's pitch, pitch video to where they're like, oh, let me put the brakes on. I don't know if I can commit to this right now. I don't think I'm far enough along. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where that type of, you know, having some kind of course of like, okay, and then ongoing group coaching opportunity will come in um, because I really want to build out, you know, be able to help more people and they don't need to be here. I mean, a lot of my clients are not in South Florida, as I meant, just mentioned the California, <laughs> California clients. So, yes, you know, a lot of my clients, I mean, don't have to be in South Florida. So building out a course that's specifically more to the marketing side, um, I think that's kind of my, one of my next steps is to do that. And as I said, I have it kind of pre-planned. I just have to build out the steps. Put it down and do it. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure you understand I'm, that. I'm <laughs> um, how do you help your clients balance their passion for their business with the practical aspects of running it? <laughs> um, good question. You know, I think it's just asking questions because ultimately they have to answer their own questions. I mean, they have to, they have to account for themselves. They have to, you know, I, I kind of find like a coach or even a mentor or whoever, you know, whatever I want to be called people ask, if you ask the right questions, they've got to come up with their own solution. Because if you just say like, Oh, you shouldn't do this. You need to do this. Yeah. You know, that doesn't go over really well. A lot of times, you know, you can make recommendations, but, you know, I think asking the right questions and kind of saying like, hey, you know, are you doing this because you really love to do this? <clears throat> but, you know, but you're not charging for it yet because I run into that a lot. Like, you know, it's a pilot program or it's, a, you know, something like that where they're not really charging for the money, you know, any money for it yet. And I'm like, but are you going to be able to charge for it? You know, and are people going to see the value in paying for it? Because obviously, ultimately, someone's got to see the value in investing in whatever that service is. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, it's asking the right questions and just have, having them come up with the answer themselves. And then they choose to go which direction they want to go. Perfect. Dan Altmaier is in <laughs> cahoots with you here. The great answer. Yep. Questions. Hey, Dan. <laughs> communication and questions and questions and questions. What legacy do you hope to leave behind in the business world? Hi, Dan. It was nice of you to join. <laughs> <laughs> what legacy? I mean, I think for me, a legacy is seeing other entrepreneurs succeed. It's really just, you know, meeting new people, you know, sharing you know, my own passion for business and then seeing other people get into business and succeed in business. So because I, I think, go ahead. go ahead. No, I mean, I think a lot of people are sometimes second guess themselves when they're in business, you know, mm -hmm. especially if they don't have any background in business, like they haven't done it before. They haven't, you know, there's a whole, like we talked about earlier, a mindset behind it. There's a whole, you know, they have to 
really be a hundred percent all in and not 50%. And how do you measure it? I mean, for me, it's what they want because I'm not going to measure their success because my, my vision of success may be completely different than their vision of success. I think each of us has our own vision for our own success. Some people may want to make a million dollars and impact X amount of lives. Some people are maybe perfectly happy doing, you know, 75,000 a year and impacting, you know, how many ever lives that impacts or businesses that impacts, you know, I think ultimately it has to be what their goal is and, how do you know are they succeeding at their goal um what marketing strategies do you have for those little guys with the limited budgets okay so they're going to sign up for your course <clears throat> and then they're going to get this little coaching and then what <laughs> <laughs> for me it's visibility I mean, I think people yeah i mean i think people have to be visible and a lot of people are scared to death of video which is what we're on right now and I still, I mean, a great time. <laughs> yeah. And then I run into people all the time. Like, Oh, what would I talk about? I mean, I, I hear it all the time. I hear it from bigger companies too. Like, Oh, I don't want to be on video. I'm like, but if you look at all the algorithms of social media, that's where that's the best form out there is video. So for me, it's like, how do you really niche in your target market? First of all, make sure that you are, you know, know exactly what the market is. And it's not everybody. It's not, I mean, I still hear that sometimes They're like everyone's my target. No, no, no. I don't care if you're selling a t-shirt, everyone's not your target market. Right. Some people don't wear t-shirts. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I think knowing your target market, knowing where they are online or in person, I mean, cause it can be in person too, depending on what you're selling. Is it a product service? You know what it is. And then, coming up with your own strategy of like, how do I create something daily or weekly? And I think that's the biggest thing that gets people overwhelmed is like, Oh my God, I got to like post X amount of times on social media. I got to write a blog over here. I got to do this over here. And it's like, what can you come up that's doable for you that fits into your schedule, but that still making an impact and allowing other people to find you. Yes. And so it's really working with people like, how do you set it maybe completely different for you than for me, you know, whereas I can maybe do write a blog and, and do five videos a week. Another person may be like, okay, I've never done a video before. So doing one video may be a huge success and then posting four times a different way may work initially. And then like working into something a little bit more visual. Dan Scott, a professional could help a person without clarity define and recognize their potential. Yeah, That's exactly, exactly what Dan. Allison Turner is doing. Uh, I think that you are awesome. You are both awesome people. Um, so you're doing all this. Do you use AI or, or GP chat or what are you doing with that? Chat GPT. <laughs> GP <you>. chat. <laughs> <With that. laughs> I do use chat GPT. Um, you know, and I always tell people to use it. I mean, I recommend I've done live streams on ChatGPT and other platforms that I use as well, because I find that, you know, like I said a minute ago, people are like, what would I say on video? You know, they don't even know what they say. I'm like, just Talk. type in like, so, well, yeah, but people don't know what to say. And I mean, I was like that. So I completely understand. I would literally, and Jack could tell you the story. He filmed me several years ago when we first got together he filmed me. We were alone in a room. I was like terrified. I was looking at this video camera like it's going to shoot me. And he edited the video such that I was out of the video part. You could hear my voice, but he edited me out with some special effects <laughs> in part of the video because I was so like, oh my God, I can't do this <laughs> kind of and thing. And that's what now. people, look you know, but you that's now. what people, yeah. But I mean, that's Toastmasters. Is this what you're seeing now? I mean, I 100% attribute it to that. And then also doing, continuing to do my own videos. So I don't just speak at Toastmasters once a week. I am doing my own stuff to obviously reinforce that as well. But no, Toastmasters uh, is a very good platform, guys. You can join. It's um, universal. It's everywhere. And you can. Yeah. And there's. Well, yeah. And, it's, and the cost isn't. I mean, I think it's $45 for six months or something. Or maybe. I don't know. It just went up to, I think, $60 for six months if you join a club. So, and a lot of them are still like my club's hybrid. 
Um, so you can even come to my club because it, we're out of Boynton Beach, Florida, but we're hybrid. So a lot of times I'm online. Huh, I wonder if mine is hybrid. So summer, out. yeah. So I mean, a lot of them went towards that after the uh, pandemic, you know, because they all went virtual for a while. So, but yeah, I mean, so I think that's a great thing. And but I use ChatGPT. Going back to the original question, <laughs> ChatGPT, um, just to, if you want to brainstorm something. So like, hey, my target market is this. What do they want to know? Give me five five bullets of what they want to know. And so ChatGPT, and you may or may not agree with it. Don't just take it for verbatim of what they say. But be like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Or, or yeah, they do want to know that. And then it comes up with a topic and use that to then create, <clears throat> you know, what you want to talk about or a blog or something like that. So you're not going to necessarily write a speech with ChatGPT, but it can give you some ideas and help you brainstorm more quickly than you going on Google or you like asking a, a coworker or someone, you know, or someone else that owns a business, like, what do you think of this? You know? So, yeah. But you have to make it your own. You have to. Yeah, you know, exactly. It, it's kind of like being in school, right? You don't you don't plagiarize. You have to give credit where credit is due. Take the idea and <laughs> run with it because you have yes. your own experiences, your own life, your own little seed that speaks to you. And you have to let that out because we don't want people aren't going to watch stuff that's regurgitated. No. You really have to have a your own take on it. Like exactly. Allison, is. Allison is uh, you're go, you're leaving tomorrow. You're going to we're no, so I'm leaving leaving a week from today. So week. I'm not leaving yet, but soon. <laughs> soon. Isn't it wonderful. You plan a trip, you plan a vacation and all the work comes to you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be, it's a working vacation. It's not really a vacation, but uh, it's a working, I'm just going to be working from remotely. So I'll be gone like for three and a half weeks. Jack will be gone for part of that time. But um, I'm just, you know, I told you a minute ago that uh, that's always in my vision is to be able to do more of that. So Last year, I only went away for maybe eight or eight to 10 days up in Indianapolis. But this year, I'm going to uh, extend that to three and a half weeks. So and there's a reason behind that. I have a couple of different things I need to do in Indianapolis and they're bookending this trip. So in between that, I'll go to Chicago. Um, I have an aunt in Chicago and then also a lot of friends in Chicago. So uh, I'll get to see Chicago in the summer, which will be great. <laughs> Perfect. That is so much fun. See, she's bookending her business with her personal, but she's still carrying on her passion, getting the job done, yeah. and enjoying life on her terms. Exactly. It's a beautiful thing. And it is 757. Um, what would you like to leave us with? I know you have your own question that you ask people, but give us your final, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> what I want to be when I grow up? Um... Uh, you know, my ultimate goal is to be able to work from anywhere. As I just mentioned, I mean, that's my ultimate goal. I love to travel. I love to see other countries, other uh, cultures, things like that. So I think ultimately would be to build this online program out and to be able to make an impact in other countries as well, not just this country. So that would be probably my ultimate goal would be to be able to have clients in London. I may not be able to have clients in some of the countries that don't speak English all the time. I'm not going to learn another language yet, but, uh, but like, you know, London, Ireland, Australia, all those countries that have, you know, and a lot of them have English as a second language. So, you know, you could certainly have clients there too. So I think that would be my ultimate goal would be to do that. What's your favorite song? Oh, geez. You're asking me, that's a Jack question. That's not an okay. Allison question. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to sit there and think about that. Actually, a Queen song, Queen's probably my favorite band right now. So like anytime I want to get pumped up or need some kind of motivation, um, I like love their Pressure song under, what is it? Under, uh, under not yeah. yeah, love that song. There's a couple of songs that I like love to listen to. So, but um, Queen in general. <laughs> I actually connect with Allison. I think I was coming back from my walk and you were starting your walk or vice versa. Because when you're out in these masterminds, you still have to take good care of yourself. And Allison takes right. full care of herself. And so we started walking before or after um, yep. the, the meeting times. And that way you clear your mind and you walk all the time. I walk every day, like 10,000 steps or more. Oh. And it is just, ah, 
Yeah. Luckily, I live in a warm place. So in the winter, it doesn't impede me from because I don't know if I would do it if it was uh, 40 degrees out um, or, you know, and you live in the in that kind of weather. So <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad, though. And Allison has just left us, but maybe she'll come back. Regardless, it was a pleasure having you all today. Um, Allison, hang with us because we'll chat with you at the end in the green room. Can you hear me? Because my computer just. So we want to thank right. Ms. Allison Turner for being here. And do you have a parting word to our beautiful clientele and people that will be checking in to see you in the replays? And just follow. Can you hear me right now? I follow your heart. And then you said, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure because something cut out on my computer. So that's why I was asking. Uh, follow your, yeah, follow your heart, follow your vision and, you know, just believe you can succeed because a lot of business ownership is belief. And if you have that belief and you have a good plan, then you can create the business you want to create. Follow through, follow through, prepare, prepare, always tell the truth. Yep. And be kind. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us all. Um, as always, we can you can share this out. Um, give us five stars. <laughs> Not five stars. Don't give us anything. <laughs> <laughs> and look for um, Allison. Uh, you put up uh, her her uh, website there. Allison Turner. What's there? It is dreamsplantstartgrow.com, and she's at Bat Cat. And you can go and talk to her, and she probably can cultivate or groom or help you depending on where you're going so reach out to allison turner look us up we love you see you next wednesday at the same bat channel <laughs> exactly be good be kind thank you very much thank you so allison hang and we're gonna say goodbye <laughs>